I'm Dr. Garth Davis. I run one of the busiest uh, surgical weight loss practices in the country in Houston, Texas. It's called the Davis Clinic. And I also uh, am the head of bariatric surgery at one of the biggest hospitals in Houston. And I started out, um, you know, my father was a general surgeon and I would follow my father to work all the time. Uh, some kids played uh, baseball with their fathers. I went and operated with mine. Uh, and had this real passion to want to become a surgeon. Uh, went to medical school. You know, medical school is very interesting. In retrospect, when you're going through it, it seems typical, but in retrospect, as I look back, it's kind of troubling because medical school is built around disease. It's, it's all about disease. Everything we studied has to do with the disease process and how to treat the disease process. It, it really had nothing to do with prevention. In fact, when we talked about preventative care, we talked about mammograms and PSA. Now you think about it, a mammogram is not preventative, it's an early diagnosis. PSA is not preventative, it's an early diagnosis, but we never talked about preventing the disease. I, I left medical school never even thinking you could prevent disease, I just thought disease happened. We, you know, our bodies are bad, we were sold a lemon, and it's my job, you know, body to, uh, my job to fix it. You know, surgeons, we like an immediate effect, you know. I cut you open, well, laparoscopically, and weight just comes flying off. And I'm like, okay, I'm God, I fixed this person. And um, I never think, you know, there's no, I don't, we do these long history and physicals, right? People come in, you know, tell me about, you know, diseases you have, are you ever sick, are you ever this, are you ever, I never asked them what they ate. I mean, here they are seeing me for weight, but I didn't, I don't really care what you ate, I'm gonna, you know, change around your stomach so you eat less. And so maybe you ate a double cheeseburger, I'm gonna make it where you eat a single cheeseburger and thereby save your life. Um, but uh, two, I mean, interesting things started happening. I mean, the universe started working in weird ways altogether. Um, I went to get my eye examined, and the optometrist was like, you know, you've got Arcus Well, I, I knew what Arcus was. You see it in old people. It's a ring of cholesterol deposits around the eye. I was like, there's no way I have Arcus She doesn't know what she's talking about. Give me my glasses. I'm not going to think about it. Then I had to get my wife uh, got pregnant. We're having our first kid. And I said, well, I bet, better get a life insurance policy. And I went and took the test, didn't think anything about it. I'm a healthy guy. And I really failed the test. I mean, they didn't even want to give me the insurance policy at all because I had high, very high cholesterol, high triglycerides, and hypertension. And meanwhile, at the same time, I had horrible irritable bowel syndrome. I mean, like debilitating irritable bowel syndrome. Um, I, it, it just really ruined my life. It depressed me, my irritable bowel, because I couldn't, I had to know where, you know, where's a bathroom at any moment in my life? You know, I can't go on lo long road trips and stuff like that. The only thing that made it okay was that as I saw patients, it seemed like everybody had irritable bowel syndrome. So I'm just, what, this is, just, again, this is just a broken human being, right? We're, we're all just built this way. We're, we're bad. And I went and saw some gastroenterologists, got scopes. Yeah, you know, it's nothing here. Take these pills, which really didn't do anything. Um, and then, so I failed the life insurance policy. And now I'm starting to say, wait a second, there, something's wrong here. And meanwhile, my patients that I cured, that I felt so great about, are coming back to me gaining weight again. And I just said, okay, this is all coming together to a certain message. And that message is I'm doing something wrong. And I started doing some research. And what I found is I'm not doing something wrong. America's doing something wrong. Because I had this belief that we're the greatest country in the world. I mean, we have the best healthcare system in the world. You got a headache, I got a CAT scan. And you could get it in five minutes. This has got to be good, right? And yet, we have one of the lowest life expectancies in the world. And this blew my mind. We had the highest obesity, highest heart disease, highest cancer. How could this all be? And so I really started looking, if we're the worst, who's the best? And I started looking into the blue zones and just baffled by these countries that live five, 10 years longer than us on average. But it's not just that they live longer than us. They live, you know, their 60s are 40. I mean, they're healthy right through their life. And I started really getting into the research, and I, I, I really decided that I had missed a whole field of health. I, I, I thought of myself as a healthcare worker, and I really didn't know about health. I knew about treating diseases, but I didn't know about health. In bariatric surgery, I mean, literally, you could go to a bariatric conference where we're discussing weight loss, and there's not a word about diet. No one talks about food. It just isn't a part of the conference. In fact, they will give presentations of, well, this patient had this weight loss surgery and they failed it. Which other weight loss surgery should I do in order to get them to lose weight? And I'm just sitting in the back going, 
what did they what were they eating and they're like oh, i don't know you know and it just this is just crazy but with my patients i take it as an opportunity to really change their lives not just eat less but eat right and i just see just phenomenal changes in the patients and it's not that i'm creating all vegans and vegetarians uh, you know i am in texas it's very hard to take a rancher and say you got to be vegan because they've you know they've got a total different connotation of vegan um, but I'm able, because I do these food logs, to make a huge change in the amount of fruits and vegetables and beans and nuts and seeds they eat, and a huge drop in the meat and dairy, and, and they almost look at, they, they now know that meat's not good for them, and it's just used in, in moderation, and then I got a lot of patients that have gone completely plant-based, which is really exciting to see. When I changed my diet, actually, going to get my labs became fun, because the rate at which my LDL level dropped was unbelievable. It just plummeted down. Um, my blood pressure got better almost immediately. This was like overnight changes for me. It was, it was kind of a shocking experience. I mean, I remember to the day my first vegetarian meal because I just, I never, I, I swear, before 35, I'm not sure I ever ate a vegetable. Um, and then I remember the first day I ate mainly vegetables for one meal, it was a Chinese meal. And immediately feeling better, because remember I had all these GI problems, immediately feeling okay from the GI problems, and this rapid sequence of my LDL getting better, my blood pressure getting better, but my GI symptoms getting better, my energy getting better, my skin clearing up because I had acne problems. It just was like, it touched every part of my life. And it was phenomenal to me. It was like finding the fountain of youth or something like that. And in fact, I got so much energy, I decided that I was actually gonna start exercising because uh, instead of getting home from work and just falling asleep, I was, I had energy. And so I started exercising and I started, I, there was this interesting kind of click in the brain that happened that when I, cause when I first started reading about plant-based diets, it scared the hell out of me because I was like, I've got to eat everything that I hate. How am I going to, I can't change, I'm an old dog now. Can't teach an old dog new tricks. Um, but I was able to change it and progressively more and more so. And this kind of showed me that, because I always thought that once you had a habit or once you got to a certain age, there was no changing. You were who you were, you're on a path and you get in that path. And I see that in my patients all the time. You're in this rut. This showed me I could get out of a rut. And so that made me start thinking, well, what else could I do? I mean, I don't think I could run a mile Next thing you know, I'm running a marathon. You know, I've never swam before. Next thing you know, I'm doing an Ironman. And so I really started getting motivated by the changes that I saw, both, both physically and mentally.